Hello everybody, welcome back to my television review series. Today we'll be discussing Power Season 5. Once again, this one is executive produced by 50 Cent Curtis Jackson, well-known American rapper. Um, I'll do the typical thing for this series. I'll give you my overall impressions and grade. I'll give you my plot synopsis and character development. And one major theme of Rico. So again, another typical crime drama. Obviously, Season 5 got a lot of plot development up until this point. So what do I think about Power Season 5 overall impressions? Um, I think the there was, again, Season 4 and Season 3, again, my biggest criticism was like the plot really didn't start to move until about like halfway through the season. I thought the criminality, I guess like the plot development was stronger on this one. Characterization's about the same, where it's like typically later seasons, again, I don't know, say your average show runs seven seasons. After about after about, again, season three to four, it's like either the characterizations are unbearable or just like getting really old to me, or uh, I thoroughly enjoy them. This one's kind of in between. It's like the characterizations are certainly not off-putting, they're not degrading, they're not really developing much for me, um, but it's not off-putting as opposed to like Ozark, where I thought Ozark, I thought the the Laney, the, the, the chick, the main mom in Ozark, that characterization was getting old, and I thought Ruth in that show was getting old. This one, they're all about the same. I think the crime development of the actual plot is moving along well enough where it's the characterizations are not waning on me. Did have decent plot development again this season. Again, the violence is, some, is well produced, or not overdone, not underdone. Um, and typically for crime, like I said, I don't like like, like funny characters. The Tommy Egan really works for me, just like some of the lines he has for the criminality side. And then also, uh, well, I don't think I'll have him up here, but uh, Sax. Uh, Cooper Sachs for the FBI. This guy, I like, I like Cooper Sachs' characterization a lot as well. And so, same type of deal for, again, just the overall, you know, not, at, I'll, I'll let you know when we're going to get into the spoiler alerts. But again, just overall, just trying to, you know, tie up loose ends from season four about killing, um, uh, what's his name, Mike Sandoval and the Lobos murders and just the previous crime. So the, the plot really is about the same type of deal. Uh, Tommy's running the drugs, James is trying to get out of the game, they're all trying to cover their ass. It's really kind of the overall plot development. But the actual individual scenes and subplots I thought moved along well. So overall, I will keep it at a B, just a flat B. Um, not much else to say here. Obviously there's one more season in this, this uh, series has been completed. I think it stopped in 2019 or 2020. It's 2023. So the season is completely done. So I'd like to know if the if the shows get canceled or if like the plot is actually written for the show to end. But I guess we'll find out in season six. So this one is another one. It was ten episodes, five or ten episodes an hour long each. Season six is fifteen episodes an hour long each, so that's kind of long. But I'm invested into the storyline, so I might as well finish it now. It's certainly not off putting. Cer certainly entertaining. Plot moves along well. Characterizations are pretty much the same. Not off putting. Not super great either. So thoroughly entertaining, like it and enjoy it. If you've not seen the season, would like to. If you really want to shut off the video now, and there won't be spoiler alerts. So we open up the season. Raina has just been killed. Um, so we're all, we're all, we've got the choppers in route. But we have basically again James and Tommy's relationship at this point by season five is again they're still working together. They're still day ones, but but they've lied to each other, gone each other, behind each other's backs enough where it's like they're not they're not. They're, all, they're invested in the crime together, but they're not like as, as tight as they were in season one or season two. So we had, in previous seasons, we had, again, um, uh, Kanan, who's played by 50 Cent. Do I even have him up here? No, I do not. But he, he again, they were Tommy and Ghost. James were after him quite a bit. But now they're all kind of unified at the beginning of season five against Dre. So Andre Coleman, he was the guy he worked for Kanan, then he worked for um, Ghost. Now he's really just trying to be the power play and be in the distro for the Jimenez cartel. So you have James running the nightclub who's really not trying to be in the drug game. He's, he's got so much dirt, he's got to be involved. What, what's, regardless, uh, Tommy doesn't want out of the drug game. He loves being a criminal, selling a lot of drugs, catching a lot of bodies. Um, their relationship is kind of fractured. He's running for um, Jason Smichich, um, which I'm assuming is the accent you put on there but for a Serbian dude. So you have the Serbian plugging Tommy, who's the main distribution. His kind of whole organization gets taken over by Andre. I'm not sure if that's, if that's in season four or season five, but that's, that's kind of like the, the drug setup. And then you have Andre Coleman, who has kind of just taken all of this organization, all the people, all of their primeras, what they call them, just their distributors or their lower level um, members. 
and he is getting plugged by Diego Jimenez and Alicia Jimenez. So he's got the cartel, you know, the Jimenez was the cartel against the Lobos, which they whacked that dude in season three or four or something. And so that's really the overall setup, is Tommy's working with the Serbians, and now he, we do have a further relationship with a, a guy, I think it's called Vincent. Like there's like, it is a, it is a, it is a Cosa Nostra. At first it wasn't just apparent to me if the characterization was just a group of Italian, Italian, uh, like a gang or an actual, like a, a, a family. So it is in New York, so they do play it as a, as a family. So you have Cosa Nostra in this episode, or in these seasons. They pretty much play a minor role. Um, but Tommy, again, learned that his father, um, Tony Teresi, again, ran with this, this, this mob, this family for a while. So they have some interactions. So the very first kind of like de uh, crime development is we have James, Tommy, and Kanan all unified against Andre. And so they, Andre kind of like sets them up so they come into this place. Big shootout. Um, nobody really gets hit. Um, I think I think uh, James gets hit in, like the side or something, but like a, a flesh wound. He gets a flesh wound. So there's a pretty big shootout scene in the beginning. Um, and I, I, ten episodes, an hour long each. I'm not gonna remember all the entire plot development. But throughout the season, we have we have Tariq again. The major thing is after Rainy gets killed, and they all know it's Tariq. A bunch of minor plot developments of Tasha knowing it's Tariq, saying that she's gonna turn it over. Go in, take the blame for it with uh, uh, Silver Terry Silver, who again was the lawyer that took over for Joe Proctor. But now uh, uh, Tasha and Terry have a romantic relationship, so you're trying to relationship manipulation. Which again, typically they're off-putting. This, this show actually isn't off-putting; just doesn't do anything for me in terms of like the plot development. So I like just see the, the crime, the crime show plot develop, but. So that's kind of going on. The main, again, for the first three, four, you have the shootout with between Andre and the three other dudes, James, Tommy, and Kanan. Was a, was a more crime development than the season three and season four in the beginning episodes. But the major thing is just like covering up, investigating Reina's murder. We have more plot development with Councilman Tate, which is, again just reminds me of whoever the dude from The Wire was. She, that guy. <laughs> but. But so again, that, that, I hate that, 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 it's not even off-putting, but just again, I just think it's detracting. If I have one more scene where it's like, they're doing, they're, this season, they're working on funding for a uh, Queen's Child Project, which is just a memorial for the entire city of Queens, but in, in a memorial to um, Raina St. Patrick, who was killed at the end of season four. So they're going back and forth. Again, I, I referenced, there was a minor plot development where kind of councilman Ted's like, you're going to have to help this street dude out, make sure he's okay. Later on in the season, there's a recording where it's Councilman Tate is skimming off the top of James' thing. So super minor plot development, I think it's super neutral. I'd say even, I'd say it's off-putting. So it's just like, the, the, the politics and that, that type of thing for an entertainment fictional show is just, just move on. But that's going on throughout the season. Um, Tariq ends up going to like a school out of town, and he starts, he's still, he's still interacting with Kanan, he's still selling some drugs. He's still not really sure where he stands. He doesn't really respect his mother or his father. So Tariq, again, he was hitting licks in season four. That was the big plot development of why Raymond got killed. He's away at school, still interacting with Kanan. The relationship, Kanan does kind of plot to take over um, Tommy. So Kanan's still kind of like plotting on him. So the relationship kind of flip flop quite a bit um, against who trusts who. But in Andre's crew, you have 2-Bit, who's kind of under him, and Spanky. Well, originally, Cristobal is Andre Coleman's number two guy. Um, they, they kill three, Andre's crew and the Jimenez, they kill, there's like a Utoro, 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 somebody in there, and he like takes a claim for a hit that he doesn't do and he has to kill three dudes, and there's some development where it's like, James wants, James and Kanan wants to scare the Italian people away from Tommy, so Tommy, again, Tommy's mo helping moving some, moving, moving some of his drugs from the, the Serbian people through the Italians, so James basically has Kanan like have two dudes do like a drive-by but with like blanks, but before they go they put up real bullets. So James just wants to scare the Italians, like stop working with Tommy. Pretty much it seems like because like James really wants to get out of the drug game. That's really his character throughout the game, even since like season four, or even maybe even since season like one. <laughs> but regardless, the dudes load up actual live bullets. They drive by and they hit one of the dudes. Well, actually, okay. First, first of all, um, when they when they go to set up. They go, so there is a, I don't, I don't think, so, even, okay, so even after the first shootout between James, uh, Tommy, and Kanan, and Andre, 
Um, they have like the Italians set up to kill kill, kill Andre, and so they're at um, Reina's memorial service. And it's another plot development of like where the memorial service is going to be. It's going to be politi politicized, so that stuff is non um, nonsense or just no effect to the plot to, for me. But at Reina's funeral. Um, Tommy tells Ghost that the people are in, are in uh, uh, are ready to go to kill Andre, and so Tariq actually lets know, Andre know. So he texts him, "Run!" And so he runs out there in like this hotel. So Andre is now his his day job is he works with this Bassett Hotel group. He's a, a hotel manager. He used to work for James. Then he goes to work for this other group, and so he's like expanding to France and stuff with the with the entire goal for him to move the Jimenez drugs through these hotels and whatnot. And so they have a couple, a couple of the dudes from Kanan's crew, along with a couple of the Italians, trying to kill Andre. They get him in a basement to throw a sheet over his head. The dude, Andre, has a gun, obviously, kills one of the Italians, and then wounds the other one. The other one's like bleeding out in a warehouse and ends up dying as well. So the Italians aren't super happy because they got, they lost two of their guys to try to kill Andre. I'm not exactly sure where they signed up in the beginning, begin with. It might just be because of the family ties with Tony and Tommy. But regardless, Tommy's not on, not on the greatest, greatest, they kind of get thrown out of the Italians after the drive-by shooting, but I missed the first plot development. So again, Tommy and these four guys, you have Tony Teresi, Tommy, Teresi's friend, who plays a pretty medium role, but I just don't remember his name, and Vincent, I think, is the head Italian guy, and they're kind of walking down the street, and these two dudes that Kanan set up with James' awareness to do the drive-by with blanks, they have live rounds, and they, I think they graze one of the dudes as well. And so after that, Kanan's like, what the fuck? So he just goes up and murks the two dudes he sent. He told him to use blanks, but then Kanan killed him to say, like, you know, I got your back to the Italians or whatever. So Kanan's still a rough and tumble character like him throughout. Um, that's kind of the relationship with the Italians. And so once Tariq goes off to school, again, there's plot development throughout the entire season of, you know, who's taking the blame for uh, murder? How, how do they know Ray Ray Jones, the, the dirty cop? How do they know Jukebox? How, do the, how are all these people connected? And so... Basically, the thing is to to really get the, the heat off of them. And Angela Valdez, again, love relationship from high school with James, but she's pretty much implicated in all the crime now, so she's more, you know, more on the criminal side than the legal side. I just wish, I wish that, I think the characterization would have been stronger there, but there would have been a harder break. So we're at season five now, the season's ending at season six, and it's like, it was a very slow roll of Angela going from the, the prosecutor to, um, to being on, on a big criminal team. And so more of this season, you have James, Angela, Tommy, Tasha all openly uh, talking together. Angela and Tasha have more of a, a relationship in terms of like finding Tariq's killer working together because they both can't trust James this season. Um, and Angela, is, she gets promoted to head of criminal. So she, the, this season, she is now the boss of all the people that were her colleagues or even above her or thought that she was, again, dirty. So there, there's a lot of the dry kind of like, why do we have to work for Angela now? In this season as well, so they're really kind of like the biggest. The, the, I'd say the biggest development is when Kanan dies, and so throughout the season again, they're, they're trying to cover up all these loose ends, a bunch of loose ends going around. They need to find some way. James and Tasha and Angela are all kind of in agreement to like keep Tariq safe, and so they have to set somebody up. They have the um, Tasha kept the gun that uh, Tariq stole from here to her to kill Ray Ray, and so Tariq is again if he's friendly with Kanan. Working without, they rob a dude, or he sells some drugs, gets the wrong money, and then Tariq kind of like calls him out for killing, killing his son Sean, and Kanan the whole time is like, you know, thinking that Tariq's completely on his side. As a viewer, you don't really see what's going to happen there, but then uh, Kanan gets pulled over, and Tariq had planted the murder weapon in the back of Kanan's car, and so Tariq, you could get, again, this is like five, episode five or six, we learn Tariq and Tasha kind of set up to, to frame Kanan. At the same time, James and Angela were kind of working to set up Andre, but I think Angela was also in on it to blame Kanan as well. So they all kind of went behind James's back. In previous seasons, James had been going behind their back. But Kanan basically, it's like, you know, don't put the cuffs on too tight. Basically, they say um, they have Tasha report Kanan has kidnapped Tariq when Tariq was just going along with it. But the police take uh, Tariq, put him in the, in the police car, and then they go to arrest Kanan. Kanan, like, Again, jiggles out of the handcuffs or like makes a move before he gets arrested and kills like three or four cops. He gets it, it, uh, mortally wounded, and so you have scenes of, of Kanan killing all the police officers, and then it's him and him and Tariq.
the Canaan, he's taking a shot to the chest or the gut or something, or a couple. And so he just gets into one of the police cruisers, cruisers try to drive away, and he dies. So Canaan dies probably about 60, 70% of the way through the season. So Curtis Jackson is now out of his own show. Um, they have another ma minor development, maybe before or after, right around the same time, mid of the season. You have James and Andre. They both get put on this council with Councilman Tate to have this thing as they're both trying to kill each other. So, so basically, Andre and James come to an agreement where James is going to kill. Um, uh, who's James? He's going to kill Diego Jimenez because Andre kind of has like a kind of has like a relationship with Alicia Jimenez. Alicia and Diego are brother and sister. They're not super close, but they run a big drug cartel. And so they make that agreement. James ends up, he does kill Diego and his men. Well, actually, he has Kanan kill Diego and his men, so obviously that had to have happened before Kanan is dead. So Diego gets killed pretty in halfway through the season. Andre and Alicia kind of like are on good terms, but then they kind of get on bad terms. Alicia um, promotes Cristobal over him, and Andre is now, he's, Andre's the big, trying to make the moves as the young gun, now he's got basically everyone trying to kill him. So he's, he's trying to trying to get a deal before he gets killed. But the big thing, major plot development is Kanan getting framed. It seems to tie up a lot of loose ends, again, having the gun that killed Ray Ray planted on Kanan, and all these other things, you know, like Keisha lies, they all get taken in for questioning, they all, and they're all together in the conspiracy now. Um, Tommy and Tony, to get Tony's out of the pen to snitch on Tommy. Um, that develops later on. Kate Egan plays a minor role, again, probably the only actually off-putting characterization of the whole thing. You have Spanky and Two-Bit, part of Andre's crew. And so, in retaliation, Andre does try to kill um, Mitchich for James, because James wants Tommy's plug to be dead, so he's going to be completely out of the drug game. But, uh, I forget who tips him off, but Jason, I think Kanan tips off Jason Mitchich, because uh, Kanan brings Diego, or brings, um, brings Mitchich uh, Jimenez's head. And because the, so, the Mitchich, the head Serbian dude, orders Kane and James and uh, Tommy to kill to kill the Jimenez cartel people, and so Kane gets on kind of on good terms with Jason there, but then obviously he dies he dies pretty quickly after that. But point being is Jason does not get killed and Diego does get killed. James held up his part through Kane and Andre did not hold up his part. So the Serbians are still running, they're still moving drugs and they're selling pills and stuff and just a bunch of different drugs this season. And so Tony's out to snitch on Tommy. Tony has a wife, Kate, or not Kate, uh, Connie, who's sick and dying on hospice. Tony's out to snitch on Tommy. Kind of goes back and forth. Um, he kills his best friend. His best friend walks in on Tony talking to the police. And Teresi's friend, who's like, again, the mobster, is like, what are you doing? And then Tommy walks in and is like, what are you guys doing? And then Tony makes a game time decision to kill his friend and say that he was snitching, as Tony was literally snitching. <laughs> And so, I'm not exactly sure, again, there's a lot of minor developments of just the different uh, police officers or F F FBI agents with the different criminals of tipping off this, tipping off that, I'm not going to remember the whole thing. But somehow, Tommy, Tommy does, get, does know that Tony Teresi is snitching, and so he ends up, ends up killing him. He takes him to see Connie one more time, then shoots him, even though Teresi said he was not snitching on Tommy, which he really was, but... They just play him some, uh, Cooper Sacks plays uh, Lakeisha, uh, Tommy and Lakeisha are now shacked up this season, and they go back and forth like three or four times. But Lakeisha gets played this tape by Cooper Sacks of whatever, of, of the, the, the recording of Tony Teresi, and it was like, it was never going to give up Tommy, but he actually was going to give up Tommy, so it's like, it, just got, it could be a strong plot development there. Be either, you know, Tony was really going to stitch on his kid and Tommy whacks him, or it really wasn't going to turn on his kid and Tommy doesn't whack him. But it was just like, Tony, they had played one recording, and it was like, show him the pictures. It's like, he was clearly, the characterization of Tony Teresa was definitely going to rat on Tommy to save, save himself to have more time with Connie. But then Connie's like, do you really want to rat on your own kid? And he was like, I would never do that. And then Tommy hears that, and it's like, well, that was a true characterization throughout the plot. So I think it could be a little stronger there. Regardless, Tony is now dead. Um, Tommy tells Kate, and they, Kate's like, see, I told you so. Um, what else happens? And so there's another, they kind of, Andre agrees to basically lie. Angela presses, pressures Andre to lie and just basically say the Jimenez cartel did the Lobos hit and Mike Sandoval, and he plans on 
he, he tells Angela originally he's going to do that, and then he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. He tells 2-Bit that, 2-Bit tells Tommy that, and so they all 2-Bit Spanky. Andre's crew is now turned against him at the end of the season. They chase after him, they all shoot at him. Um, it looks like Andre kills a couple of the guys, but they basically, an FBI van literally pulls up as they're in a shootout to like save Andre, and then Tommy like shoots at the door a couple of times. It's just kind of cheesy. <laughs> But it's like, you know, if you, if you don't sign, the point is they, they scare Andre into just literally signing a confession that's a lie to save their all of their asses. And so that's kind of the point of the shootout was to really scare Andre. And before then, two of Jimenez's uh, hitters had come into his baby mama's crib with, the, with the, his daughter and had Andre killed them when they were trying to kill him. So that's kind of after, after Diego dies, Alicia makes crystal ball number two, so Andre is pretty much... He's pretty good, just got a big target on his head throughout the whole time. Joe Proctor, again, he's kind of off the, off protecting James, but he, he's liable too because he saw the, the dark Department of Homeland do get murked by Tommy in his apartment. And Terry Silver has this new love relationship. And he basically comes back into the picture. James scares him off midway through the season. He comes back at the end of the season, sees him boinking Tasha, realizes Terry's not going to go away. So you don't really see a kill scene until later, but Terry goes missing, and this is within like an episode or two, but then you do see James choking him out. So I'm assuming Terry Silver is now dead. So it seems like most of the, the plot has been tied up. Um, basically, a couple other things with Intrigue is now good. I think he's completely off the li liability. Keisha and Tommy go back and forth a little bit. I don't think Simon Stern does much of anything. They do, they release the, uh, the Queen's Child Project with um, Raina's uh, name on it. But basically, I forget why, but again, there's a bunch of minor developments of who's trusting who, who's doing what, who's leaking who. But James and Angela, they kind of get back together. Again, I like them a lot better when they're not in a romantic relationship. But they kind of get back together at like, the very end of the season, and they go back to the high school to like see if, um, see if, uh, if Angela was was the, the rat, but really what happens is they tie up all of the loose ends, but then from the very first scene of season one, when he kills one of the dudes that was again in the Mayan show, um, and he lets, James lets go this girl, I forget her name, but he says, um, Entienda, like, do you understand to her? Basically go get out of here, and then, but during the season, um, James says Entienda in like one of his press conferences and his Spanish chick, She's waiting tables, drops her tray, and realizes this, this is the dude that killed her husband or fiance at episode one, season one of the whole series. So she comes back into play. Now you have a female witness. And so Tommy thinks it's Angela, where they learn that it's a female witness. Tom, James thinks it's Angela. Tommy's sure of it. Again, throughout the entire series, Tommy's been wanting to kill Angela. And so James confronts Angela. I don't even remember, again, I just watched it. I don't remember if Angela even tells it exactly who it is because I think she could have got out of it again. They might just want to kill off Angela at this point. But it, it could have been easily been Angela just tells him that it's this chick from season one, and he, James would know exactly who she, she's talking about, and it wouldn't be her. So the whole time they're like working together to tie up all these loose ends. So that chick comes back, and she's the witness. Tommy, they're, Angela and James are talking in the thing, and Angela just takes a bullet to the chest, and you see Tommy shooting her. And James screams really loud. So Angela at the end, we don't really know. We'll just put a dotted line. Maybe she's dead. Maybe she'll survive miraculously in the hospital. And John Mack takes another job somewhere else. I like Cooper Sacks throughout. I think he's funny. I think Tommy and Cooper are probably my favorite characterizations. But so the season ends when you're not really sure if Angela's dead. She's definitely been shot right in the chest by Tommy. So I'm assuming she's going to die, but we shall see. Kanan didn't die when we thought he was dead at season one. So again, overall, I thought the crime development was, was solid. Um, the actual production, like the visuals, the, the tone, the, the musical score behind it, I think is solid. We even had a Fetty Wap reference in season four. But I think that, like, the background tracks are good. You got some good uh, hip hop rap music in there. And the overall violence production is decent. P crime development is decent. Characterizations, you know, the only real character that said it was off putting is Kate. Um, but also not super strong. None of the characters like I'm really liking this character. I really like this relationship. Um, a lot of the relationship bullshit is is annoying. Lakeisha and Tommy is kind of kind of taxing the same way Tommy and Holly was. I'm glad James and Angela have minor romantic relationships. I just thought the characterization were stronger. Like Tasha and Angela working together to like save the kid. Even though, like it's a very 
trite or cliche kind of plot development. But I just thought the characterizations were more convincing as opposed to season one where it's like you just introduced this character James St. Patrick and you don't really see any drugs and he's this big drug kingpin. So yeah, I think the, the characterizations have not progressed, but they have not deteriorated as well. And typically by season five, I'm pretty tired of most of the characterizations. So it's keeping me going. Again, there's only one more season, so I'll stick it out for that for sure. But overall, it'll be certainly entertaining. Um, yeah, again, I'm, I'm sure I missed some minor plot developments or major plot developments, but that is what I remember off the top of my head. So thank you for watching my review of Power Season 5. See you on the next one.